There's way more than a million sitting on your assets, I guarantee it. With, with just a short little uh, adventure into your introspection, you'll discover things if you look. I met an individual many years ago doing a radio show live about an hour outside of San Francisco. And he insisted that I come to do the show uh, live, not by telephone. And um, he reached a lot of stations. There are 50 million people, viewers or listeners in, in his system. And so I was, you know, I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to go and speak to 50 million people. So I took a limo down to the where his place was and I got there. When I got to this building, it didn't look, it was unassuming, it didn't look like a radio show, it didn't see any big satellite dishes or anything like that. It was just like a warehouse. And I knocked on the door, that was the address. And finally the gentleman came to the door and walked me down through these aisles to the very front corner of this building that didn't even have a window in it. Uh, and that's where his radio station was. And he lived in the building and had his radio station there with his wife and had been doing that for 48 years. It was, it was hard to comprehend. And as I was walking down these aisles, back and forth through these aisles to get back navigating through there, I saw these big giant reel to reel radio station shows. Um, and then finally going down technologically through the ages, you could see the evolution of the radio and I finally, I looked and stopped and I saw the Beatles were interviewed and I saw Jimi Hendrix was, and uh, I saw Richard Nixon and I saw amazing interviews this guy had done. He was like the Larry King of radio. And at the end of, I, I did a one hour show with him live and then we pre-recorded another show, two hours and all. At the end of that, um, he asked if I'd like to be involved in in donating to his charitable organization to keep his radio station live. That's how he survives. And at first I thought it was a joke. I thought he's asking for donations. Cause when I walked through there, I saw a billion dollars worth of assets sitting in this warehouse. And this, this donation thing he had was $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 denomination. I'm thinking like, this is looks like it's been 48 years in the same request. So I said, well, how come you're asking for money when you're a billionaire? And he looked at me and he looked at his wife and he goes, we're not billionaires. We survive month to month on this place. And I said, uh, well, in my opinion, what I saw in your warehouse is worth billions and um, you're not capitalizing on it. You're not valuing it. And I had a conversation with him and I said, you know, if you were to package and, and put that, uh, all that to use. There's a lot of people that would easily pay money to listen to the Rolling Stone interviews in the 1966 or the Watergate issues or whatever. There's a lot of value sitting there that people would historically love to get. If you packaged it and probably made it available, you'd probably make a commercial endeavor out of it and never be worrying about asking for money again. And he was so astonished by that. I said, you're a billionaire and are sitting on it and don't even know it. And he said, well, what do I do? And I said, well, I would archive this in a more updated format, digitalize it, and then I would make sure that it's packaged and get somebody to package it and put it out there at a really moderate to simple fee. And I guarantee you, you get some sellers out there if you let know that you got this in archives. So I left there. Two years later, I finally get a call from some assistant from this guy and said, I just want to let you know, Dr. Martini, we appreciated what you said a couple of years ago. We finally got Stanford University to archive the whole thing. I said, you didn't give them the right to get a copy, did you? Because they saw, they saw potential on it. And he says, I don't know that. But they finally archived it. But the gentleman never did anything but archive. He never put it into pack, package. Now, the reason I'm saying that, that story, is because money circulates through the economy from those who value it least to those who value it most. And if you don't have a value on wealth, financial wealth, you will store your genuine wealth in whatever you value most. So this gentleman who is an icon in the industry had a billion dollars worth of assets sitting under his nose, you might say, but because he had a value on social contribution and intellectual property 
and didn't have a value on financial wealth. He stored that financial potential sitting in intellectual property in a warehouse and social interaction because he had interviewed so many famous people. But it was never going to be converted into financial cash unless he had a higher value on converting it into financial cash. Because every decision we make is based on what we believe will give you the greatest advantage or disadvantage to what we value most. So he had a value on storing that and keeping those archives, but he never commercialized it. I'm not saying you have to. There's no right or wrong about it. It's just that you're sitting on assets that are hidden assets in a genuine wealth form, but it's not in a financial wealth form. And this gentleman never realized his wealth. Now, I've also met people that have social contacts, incredible social contacts. I had a lady that was used to, uh, that had used to come to my seminars a long time ago that was making $45,000 a year working for the Chamber of Commerce in Houston, Texas. And she wanted to grow her, she wanted to have enough money to be able to have a decent life, but she was just barely bought, making each month. And I sat down with her and consulted with her. And I said, you know, you've got a fortune sitting here. You know, everybody who's anybody in the city of Houston through the chamber contacts, but you're not leveraging them. You're introducing people to everybody else and they're doing deals behind your back worth millions in the oil business. And you're sitting there and getting paid a salary. And because, but you know, all these people, she says, yeah, I've, I've introduced them. I know they've made deals. And I said, but you never made it in structure because you don't have a value on financial wealth. You have a value on social wealth by the people you know. And she goes, well, that's true. I said, so you're sitting on a gold mine and didn't capitalize on it. So I sat her down with it. I showed her how to shift her values to some degree and showed her how, how turning it into financial wealth would help her also in social contacts. And she went from 45,000 to 750,000 in one year when she did that, because then she created a little contract, created a company called the Liaison Group and orchestrated it in such a way where she, when she made contacts with people, she says, well, here's the deal there. If you do business, there's a finder's fee or a percentage. And to her surprise, a few people would say, well, never mind then. But most people would say, yeah, if I do a deal, absolutely. I'll give you a finder's fee or a percentage, whatever, whatever. And so she started doing that. And now with her social contacts, she was able to help the, the chamber because she gave a portion to the chamber. She gave a portion to the to the people that were involved and she gave a portion to herself. And what was a blessing is that these people wouldn't have done business if it wasn't for that. So she deserved a percentage and the chamber deserved a percentage. So she made a win-win out of it, made way more money on her life because she now valued her hidden assets into something that were revealed assets. I've seen people in every area of life, spiritual wealth. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar is a spiritual guy that has the art of living foundation and he's turned it into billion dollars uh, because he's now doing things that are social causes building hospitals and and he's got a network of people because he's socially connected and spiritually connected so i just want to make this statement and then i want you just to think about it and mull it over over the the period here everybody's got a billion dollars worth of assets in their life but they won't convert it into financial forms unless they have a value on financial wealth building, they'll have genuine wealth in the form of their social contacts, a form of intellectual property. Maybe your children, you know, and, and depending on the years and ages of your children, maybe when they're teenagers, you could lend them out a lot easier. But when they're little babies or whatever, and somebody said, look, I'll give you a million dollars to your child, you'd go, of course not. That's ridiculous. Well, that means you're storing a million dollars worth of assets sitting in that child, possibly 10 million in there. That's how valuable they are to you. Alfred Marshall said that uh, you, you won't move a muscle. You won't move a muscle without being able to measure it economically. So if, let's say you don't smoke. And I said, I'll give you a, a dollar to smoke a, a, a cigarette. And you go, no. $10, no. $100, no. $1,000, no. $10,000 no. $10, to smoke one cigarette. No. $100,000 to smoke a cigarette. Okay, a <laughs> million dollars, I'll smoke a cigarette, sure. I can also take somebody that's smoking a cigarette and go in the other direction. I'll give you a million dollars not to smoke a cigarette for the day. 
And we can find out exactly what the motive and how much motive it is and measure it economically. That's what Alfred Marshall was trying to show, that every motive is measurable economically. And you think, well, I've never, there's, they're priceless, the children are priceless. Well, I don't know if I gave you a billion for your child and I told you that I would take your child and I'd put it into an educational system that would allow it to be one of the greatest leaders, greatest opportunity, um, the greatest affection and appreciation for you. Uh, if I gave you enough things that you hope for your child and you were able to get cash, you might say, well, if, if you can give a better opportunity for that child than what I can offer, yeah, you might, you might do it. You might not think so, but I've actually demonstrated that in Sydney, Australia one time. So every movement of a muscle can be measured economically by motive because of the value that it represents to human psyche. Now, if you don't have a value on a particular currency or whatever, then it may mean nothing to you. But if it means something to you and you see the opportunities of what you can exchange with somebody else and get what you want, money's a way of measuring it. But unless you really have a value on financial wealth, you'll store your assets, your hidden assets in these other forms. And I know a woman that was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And she decided that she didn't want to date just anybody. She wanted to date extremely wealthy men. And she knew she could because of her beauty. And so she would basically said, well, you know, you can't afford me. And the guy would say, well, what do you mean I can't afford you? He said, no. And if you can't put a half a million dollars down on a date, forget it. And she got it. She started doing it. It wasn't for prostitution. It wasn't for escorting. It was just to go out. And uh, she valued herself. And most people don't value themselves and convert what assets they have that are hidden into valuable assets. They never even look and take the time. Many years ago, not too many years, maybe 10 years ago, I created a program called Where's My Billion? And I sat down with people for a day and I asked them to dig in all seven areas of life. their spiritual, their intellectual, their business, their financial, their family, their social, their physical areas of life. And let's go make a list of every hidden asset you may not be paying attention to. And let's go first discover what it is. And then let's come up with a strategy on how to convert it. Because everything that's a value is convertible into finances. There's somebody that will pay for it if you package it properly. So you're, you're sitting on a million dollars or a billion dollars right now without even realizing it. And you may be sitting there, you know, getting by month to month. And, and having a value on buying consumables and not buying assets. Until you have a value on buying assets that work for you passively, you're going to be working your life for money and being a slave to it instead of having it work for you. And if you're not digging and discovering all the hidden assets you have, you'll go by the classical assets that you've been told. Well, that currency, that coin, that piece of paper, or that check or whatever, that electronic thing is your money. But there's lots of intellectual property and that uh, people are sitting on and not realizing it. I had a lady that was in Australia, a lovely lady, very bright uh, woman. It's very dedicated to helping uh, businesses and consulting and corporate, very well read, extremely uh, sharp lady. And uh, she was trying to find out where she was storing assets in her intellectual property or knowledge and in her, in her skills of, of business consulting. And, and I just asked her a simple question. I said, uh, of all the clients you've ever had, which clients have you catapulted their business forward by consulting with them? And he goes, she goes, I've done lots of that. I said, let's pick one. And she picked an, a, a company and she goes, what I did led that company an extra 50 million. I said, well, that information you had was worth $50 million to them. She goes, I never thought of it that way. I said, if you package that, and use that again and again and again, millions of dollars could be generated by that packaged information. And so she'd start doing it and she raised her income from that. And so that's uh, what, what's interesting is that we don't value ourselves. And until we value ourselves, the world doesn't value us. And the way we know we value ourselves from a financial perspective is we figure out a way of packaging those hidden assets into something that's meaningful, that serves people. If you don't care about humanity and you don't care about filling somebody else's needs and serving somebody else, there's no reason for finances. But if you actually go and do something that serves somebody, there's a way of converting it. And I believe that all the hidden assets, I have yet to find a hidden asset that can't be converted into financial assets. And it's really a creative experience to go and do that. But when I did that program, Where's My Billion? And I, I did it in Chicago the first time, you know, we had quite a few people there and I, I asked them to go digging and 
then every time they would discover something that would be wow, you know, like a tearjerker or realization to put their hand up and share it with everybody in case it can help other people. And they were just popping throughout the day on insights of where they were storing assets that they didn't do it. And new companies were born out of it. New ideas and in virtual companies and all kinds of companies came out of that day because people then packaged what hidden assets they had, they're sitting on. My, my, most of my assets are sitting in intellectual property. I've been studying and learning and reading and doing that for 49 years. And so I've got, you know, a, a, a wealth of information. And uh, so I then, if I package that wealth and put it together in some valuable form that people are willing to pay for it, I can convert it into financial assets. But some people have social contacts. Some people have not specialized knowledge. Some people have uh, beauty. Uh, I know of a, a woman that is absolutely stunning and she turned it into photo photography and modeling and made a fortune out of it. I know others that had singing voice and they turned it into a fortune out of singing. But everybody's got a hidden talent and a hidden asset that if you don't take the time to go and contemplate right now in your life what they are, you may be sitting on a gold mine and not even know it. I, I When I gave this title about, you know, where's, you know, you have a billion dollar, million dollars. I really meant a billion. There's way more than a million sitting on your assets. I guarantee it would, with just a short little uh, adventure into your introspection, you'll discover these. If you look, <clears throat> there's people out there making income off all kinds of things and talents and skills that you have that you're not paying attention to and you haven't packaged or you haven't partnered with somebody. Sometimes it's, you haven't packaged because the things that you think it's going to take to actually convert it into cash uh, is not what you want to do. Then fine, surround yourself with somebody. This gentleman from the radio station, he got somebody. See, he had a high value on storing it, but he didn't have a value on selling it. So he hired somebody to store it and put it in digital format. So two years later, it's just in an updated format, but it's not still commercialized. But if you hired somebody that was great at packaging information and presenting that and putting it into a sales structure, he would have been a billionaire. And the man passed away and never knew his wealth potential. He didn't apply it. I told him about it, but he just wasn't ready to hear that. And if you're, you know, your hierarchy of values dictate your financial destiny. If you don't have a value on that financial wealth, it never shows up in financial forms. I mean, 99% of the people, if you ask them how many want to be financially independent, they all put their hands up. But then if you ask them if they are, they all put their hands down. And that's because they don't have the values that will convert the hidden form they have into something that's revealed that people can buy. And that is amazing uh, realization that uh, it's there. Now, I see in the comments that I really can't think of anything to offer a value. Well, Jackie, um, look again. I can tell you right now that it's there. You just haven't taken the time to look. And the question you want to ask yourself is, what do I have that people want? You know, money is when you provide us in a transaction, you provide something of value and then they measure that value inside and then they give you money back. Money is simply a means of sustainable, fair exchange between two people having a transaction and exchange. So if you have something, uh, could be your knowledge, it could be your ideas, it could be your consulting services, it could be your, your speaking in my case, it could be um, your poetry. It could be your voice. It could be the way you design things. It could be the way you cook. It could be the way you can gather and interact with people socially. I know people that are incredible socialites and they know how to gather and put together great events and social events that everybody wins by meeting new people and they make a fortune off that, putting on events. I know a lady that uh, was loving dancing, she wasn't a professional dancer, but loved dancing, was going to ballroom dancing. And we sat down and asked her some questions. And all of a sudden she goes, wow, I, I can I can coordinate a trip to Spain and do flamenco dancing and organize a thing and get people to do it. So she put it together and she got a dozen people to pay her a few thousand dollars each. And she made forty five hundred dollars on the first trip, which is more than what she was making. So there's there's you've got hidden talents. I know somebody that's great at cutting hair. There's skills of all different forms. There's great at, at uh, doing makeup. I don't know. 
you may be great at something and may not value it and may not be doing it commercially, but it's an asset that you've got that you may not be capitalizing on. And you'll probably meet somebody else that's not even as great at you at doing it, making a fortune out of it because they packaged it and you didn't. So it may be knowledge you have, it may be contacts you have, it may be spiritual awareness. Um, I know somebody that started a, a, a spiritual dialogue where they would read and they took books. I know a guy that in, in also in Australia that, that was doing book summaries and he loved summarizing books. He'd read a book and summarize and take notes for himself. And then I said, well, why don't you type it up a little nicer and put it in a nice little format and put a standard thing to it and do book summaries and then send the book summaries out and let people know. And, and then, uh, well, he started out in the very first year, he had 30 people that was paying a hundred dollars. Okay. He made $3,000 and that was it. Not much, but all of a sudden he, uh, you know, he, he, he got the next year he had more than that. He got, you know, 300 people. And all of a sudden it's now more thousands of dollars. And by his third year, it was now able to replace his income. And he started doing book summaries. Then he decided to go and and actually meet with the book authors and let them know what he's doing. And then say, I'd like to do an interview with you and then take that interview and transcribe it and add it to the book summary. And, and he started building this business. Then he started putting conference on and bringing those speakers and, and uh, book authors into the city. And all of a sudden now he's getting leveraged it with the brand and taking pictures with them. And now he's becoming known and he built a friggin' business out of it, a massive business out of, out of doing book summaries that he was doing anyway. So he was doing something that he wasn't even realizing it was, it was a kachinger that could, it could make him some cash. And he was, helping the book author sell books. It was helping people get the education for the books. Everybody was winning out of it. And he got interviews and got leverage and got to meet people. And then he ended up going on radio and, and even television talking about these authors, about the upcoming events that he was promoting. And then people were coming. And I mean, it was amazing what this guy turned it into. And in about a five-year period, it was a very viable business. Didn't start out the first year that way, but he didn't give up on it. And he took an asset which was natural. You always want to look at what you spontaneously do every single day and ask what it is that's valuable. It could be actually taking care of kids. I know a lady in San Diego that loved taking care of her kids. She had three kids. And so she just made it available that if you want to, me to help take care of your kids, she started making uh, sitting services and she ended up with eight kids and they pay her, you know, 50 bucks for the evening or whatever and made $400 taking care of some extra kids. So her kids had friends to talk to. And she ended up doing that as a part-time business and made some money and was sitting on that and didn't save a lot. She was saving only about hundred dollars a month, but that's better than nothing. And if you put hundred dollars a month away and you're not doing it beforehand, you're moving in the direction of money working for you. But, but you have assets. You don't want to lie to yourself saying, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Stop and look. Anything that you ever do with any human being that makes them engage and want to talk to you, interact with you or whatever is probably an asset. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to hang out with you and you could possibly capitalize on it. So you're sitting on a million dollars, sitting on possibly a billion dollars. And these are called hidden assets. And when the, the when you have a high value on wealth building, the hidden assets will become now to um, revealed assets. And I really believe that there's a billion dollars worth of assets in everyone, but they just don't take the time to look. And the day I spent that doing with those people, they were blown away by what they found in themselves. So don't lie and say, I don't know, I can't find it. Stop, look again, do it again, and keep digging. And if not, ask your friends, what are the, what are the things that you know about me? And have them write them all down and look in all seven areas. Spiritually, what do you know? Because I know a guy that actually started taking spiritual quotations. He collected spiritual quotations and started putting together pictures from a camera and put spiritual quotations with the camera pictures and started making those available. And he didn't make a lot of money on that at first, but he made some, but he started making, got more creative and he started doing, and then he started to decide, you know, I'm going to go traveling and taking really amazing pictures that people are going to want with spiritual inspiration on it. And then he went online when the internet came along and then he started making money on it. And then his, his uh, inspirations got started being used by other people. And he started charging a little small fee for the application of that picture with that aspiration, uh, inspirational quote on it. And people would pay 10 bucks to have that quote. 
he kept the price down and he and he got a little business out of it or she got a little bit of out of it and what's interesting is all of a sudden we got now creative ideas so start in the area that you love doing that you spontaneously do because that's what's highest on your value that's where you store your greatest wealth and then ask uh who might actually benefit from that and how do i package it to where they could benefit from it care enough about humanity to package what you have to offer for humanity in a way where there's a sustainable fair exchange and there's a you're a millionaire and i mean a millionaire in the sense of a million dollars worth of assets easily i think it's you know when i said a minute it really is a billion because i i didn't have a problem finding a billion dollars worth of assets sitting there and of course if you hang out with people that are already wealthier they are already probably more creative about doing that and they'll come up and see more value in you than you see in you if you hang out with people that are have a low value on money they'll probably think you're greedy and expensive if you hang out with people that have a higher value of money they'll probably think you're cheap and inex inexpensive if you hang out with those individuals they'll probably see assets in you that you don't see hanging out with people that don't have a value on it they're not going to see it and they're not going to know how to convert it so you might want to look at who you're hanging out with too if you're not prioritizing what you're feeding your mind every day if you're not prioritizing what you're doing every day you're not prioritizing you know how you're spending your money you're not prioritizing life and living by highest priority and not valuing yourself you're probably going to pay a, a, a price for that by devaluing yourself so you have something that's a hidden asset it's in your highest values it could be in any of those seven areas of life spiritual mental career financial fine family social and physical start digging you will surprise yourself if you look they're there it's not missing i did a little videotape many years ago i think 2013 called where's my billion it's a video online video that i have on there might want to go peek that, take a peek at that watch that because that i i gave like today i gave creative ideas on what you could do to go find it but it's there don't question it just go digging for it and if you have difficulty get your friends to get with them and all together work on that and help each other find hidden assets and values let them know what they value out of you and why they're hanging out with you and you'll discover things you didn't know it may be things you know it may be things the people you know it may be your spiritual awareness it could be any area and that's why i have also something here uh and and if you're interested in empowering those areas waking those areas up uh those seven areas i just mentioned i have a special master class on doing that uh because if you wake those up and become aware of the power you already have that's what this class is about is discovering those powers uh and then you go and put a high, a high value on wealth building and write down the benefits of how converting that how it could serve human beings because that's fulfillment comes by making a difference in people's lives and if you write down the benefits of how to convert these hidden assets into something that's tangible that can people can buy you're going to serve them and when you do you have fulfillment grab onto the master class and um all i can say is uh, and don't go to bed tonight without writing down the hidden assets and start on it if it takes you a day or a week or a month or three months or a year to uncover what those are i guarantee you're going to be farther ahead by doing that than never discovering the magnificence you have inside you have wealth sitting inside you the word wealth means well-being wheel means well-being the your your whatever is highest on your value i guarantee you is where it's being stored i've been doing this quite a while and i I know how to bring it out of people and that's where it's going to be found so look at what you spontaneously do that you love doing that nobody has to remind you to do and what you what you do and look in the seven areas of life and discover your hidden hidden assets anyway hope you enjoyed the the little webinar we did here please join me next week for another webinar that we'll be doing and and uh, take advantage of this information because this is I'm, I'm sharing with you what's made a difference in my life and I've been blessed in my life because of the information that I fed myself. So keep feeding yourself uh, uh, the knowledge that helps you do something extraordinary with your life. You, The magnificence of who you are is far greater than any fantasies you'll impose on yourself. And don't underestimate what you have inside. It's way more magnificent than first seeing.